So today we shall be changing the transmission fluid on our 2014 Mercedes E250. The car is coming up for seven years old now, although it has only done uh, nearly 44,000 miles, it'll be seven years old in July. So they say on the 722.9 gearbox, we shall be tra changing the transmission fluid. So let's go and see what we need. So behind us, we have everything that we need to change the fluid on our 7G Tronic Plus gearbox. 2014 model, we've got the ATF, the gaskets, the filters, and all the screws and bolts. Right from the top then, we've got 10 litres of Mercedes ATF 134, which is the 236.15 spec transmission fluid for our 7G Tronic Plus gearbox. We, you, you can buy uh, some kits with six litres, but that's not enough fluid if you drain the torque converter. You need apparently about nine litres. So we bought 10 to do the job properly because we are going to drain the torque converter. On top of that, we have a new sump gasket, a new filter, and the bolt kit with the magnets and stretch bolts. All these Mercedes uh, official parts bought from uh, Mercedes Newcastle. We paid 63.83 for all the parts kit, and we paid 80 pound for 10 liters of fluid. Then you'll need something like this, which is the iCarSoft V2. This measures the transmission oil temperature, which needs to be 45 degrees to get an accurate measure of the amount you, uh, you need in the sump. You can use an infrared thermometer, but uh, this is the much better, apparently. Then we have an adapter that fits into the sump. So you can then attach a hose to pump the fluid in from the bottom. We bought a cheap tap as well for a couple of quid, again off eBay. And some hose, which we bought from B&Q, actually. Then we have a submersible pump, 12 volt submersible pump with a switch on connects to an old battery you have knocking about. This then fits onto the hose and will pump the transmission fluid directly from underneath. According to the spec, the transmission fluid should be changed every five years or 77,500 miles. Our vehicle has only done 44,000 miles, but it is six and a half years old, so it does need the change. Then you need a low range torque wrench as the quarter drive goes down to four newton meters. You need that for these stretch bolts. They need to be tightened to four newton meters for a start and then rotated 180 degrees to get the right um, tension on the sump. The stand pipe is the green stand pipe, some of the old ones are white, this one's a green one, we've got two strong magnets. Funnily enough, uh, when we took the sump apart, this morning, there was only one magnet in the sump. Uh, this is the sump that we take, took off this morning. Took it off, cleaned it up, it's spotless again inside, but it was really dirty initially, so it was due a change. So once the car has been jacked up, we need to remove all the under tray bolts, like so. the trays and we're underneath that's the uh, sump the gearbox sump so we'll just put a level over it and see how far we're out we're about 1.6 degrees out on that so we're going to jack it up a tiny bit more to try and get it exactly right so we finally got it uh, jacked up to be roughly level I'm just going to check underneath now to see how level it is it's pretty important I think to get the vehicle level when you do the transmission change so here we go, and here we go, and we are, let me just see that it's 0.35 out of a degree, so I think that will do me, 0.35. So the next job we've got to do is remove the auxiliary pump. Uh, if we take this off, uh, you then we will rotate the crankshaft and you will see the drain plug for the torque converter. So. 
the next stage is to unplug this one which we do like that and then we'll undo the bolts and remove the auxiliary pump so now we have to remove the auxiliary oil pump so there's only three of these uh, allen bolts are remove those and the last one which i loosened off just a few more turns and there you go put a container underneath because it will leak we have a container just there just gently ease the pump out pulls out like that. it away and then it will start to leak there's a the blue fluid coming out now on the top you'll see a hole that's where we can locate the drain plug for the torque converter so we need to rotate the engine around now to make the drain plug visible so to get this crank to turn over so it could line up with the uh, torque converter drain bolt we need to turn the crank with one of those torx bolts there so the easiest way to do it is to remo remove the air intake so we move that out of the way now you get your socket down to there and you grab any one of those with your socket wrench and you just turn it turn it clockwise and get somebody underneath to look at it so it white lines up okay yeah bit more yeah. bit more bit more tiny bit more bit more tiny bit more tiny bit more bit more a little bit more that's it's perfect thank you brilliant so now we can remove the the uh, torque converter drain plug just by simply unscrewing with the Torx and letting it drain out. There we go. Uh, because the uh, torque converter takes ages to drain, you can encourage it by using a little bit of uh, steel coat hanger wire coat hanger and I just put it in there helps it drain a bit quicker just put a little hang it on there a little hook on the end and just drop it in and that should help it drain a lot quicker and the next job in then is to remove the sump plug on the uh, transmission and which is just we've loosened it off beforehand slacken off a little bit and then this should slowly come out like so There's a transmission fluid coming out into a nice big container. In actual fact, the colour don't look too bad. But um, there it goes. So the next bit then, once it's stopped dribbling, is to dislodge the overflow. So you put a screwdriver in and just knock it to one side gently. And there you go. And then the fluid will just pour out it says there we go the, then the fluid will continue to empty completely now we can undo the sump Pam. so now oh, we're going to remove the pan the sump pan whoops the torque converter It's just come off, that's it. Remove the sump pan, so undo these six stretch bolts, which are pretty loose actually. You can see it's never been done before because they're mucky, so it's the first time it's had a transmission service. Just undo these.
so that's the pan removed and now we're just going to remove the filter which just means all we have to do is just pull it out gently and off it pops and there we go that's that the longest time it seems to be taking is to um, drain all the fluid out the torque converter it's been dripping now for about 15 minutes and um, we've only took about six litres out in total. You can see why some garages don't want to do it. It just takes so long, but we're going to let it go. Take, take, if it takes an hour, we'll just have a cup of tea and uh, wander around and come back to it and see how we get on in a few moments. Now I've got the pan and filter out, you can see, actually, it is, the fluid is actually filthy. Uh, and we seem to have lost a magnet. I thought you had two magnets in the sump. We've only seemed to have one. And look at the sludge on that. That's a lot of magnetic sludge to be stuck on there. It's horrible. So I think it's probably due, won't it? It's horrible thick. I'm quite surprised. I thought the oil when it came out looked all right, but it is black as you're at. And it's only done 44,000 miles. So it was well, well due. I'll just show that magnet again to show the extent of the muck and everything on it. It just completely sludged up. I just took it off then. Look at the mess on that. That is absolutely awful. It is black, but I can only find the one magnet, so I thought they should have had two. But there it goes. Once you've cleaned most of the oil debris out of the pan, just give it a good spray with a clutch and brake cleaner, and then wipe it over with a clean cloth. Just get rid of any sort of traces of muck. It's quite easy, actually, quite rewarding to get it nice and clean. It does come up really clean. So, and then you also remove the the green overflow pipe as well because you get a new one in the kit. So once that's all clean, it should be ready to go back on. So once the sump is nice and clean, then you can put the new gasket on. The gasket only goes on one way, so you can't get it wrong. Just snaps into positions like that. Okay. Then you have two magnets. The magnets fit on the front of the sump. Just clip into place, like so. Then you have the new green overflow pipe and the overflow pipe fits on there and that just snaps into place as well and there you go now and that's ready to go back on okay now we're going to refit the uh, torque converter sump plug that just screws into there like that and then this has to be torqued down to 10 newton meters just nick it up by hand it's got a brand new washer on and some thread seal as well. Okay, I'll just talk like that. Once we've cleaned all the surfaces down by the auxiliary pump, put three bolts back in and they need to be torqued down to eight newton meters. So that's one. Two, and the last one, three, that's done. Also not forgetting to plug the uh, auxiliary pump connection back in again. There we go, that's back in. Now we just need to snap in the new filter, like so. It snaps in. I put a little bit of um, new fluid around the O-ring before it went in. Now it's time to put the sump back on. So we replaced the sump, a new gasket, and now we're just tensioning the bolts up now. They've got to be to four newton meters for a start, so that one's gone. And we've done them all now, so what we do now is you have to rotate 180 degrees from where they are. Oh, 
And that's it. That's tightened up. So we know where we fit the exhaust bracket back up. Is that done? And refit the heat shield. A quick check round and uh, everything looks okay. So ready to uh, refill now with the ATF. Okay, we're ready to pump the fluid in now. Got the iCar soft plugged in and it's got it set at the temperature and the temperature transmission is 57 degrees. There's no fluid in there at the moment. We have the adapter plugged into the bottom of the sump and we've got the short hose with the tap which runs into a submersible pump which is now in the 5 litre container. This is powered by a 12 volt battery and a switch. So we'll turn the tap on and begin to fill. There it goes. Just putting five litres in straight away. Okay, it shouldn't take very long to put five litres in. I've just refilled the container again with another top up, another two or three litres, and we'll just put some more in now. There we go, that's away again. So we've put in about four litres at the moment. Okay, we've put about seven litres in now, so I'm just going to turn it off and see what the level is like. Turn the pump off. We'll just pull this down and see. Okay, so we've gone over the overflow now. So now it's time to start the engine. So back in the car, we're gonna start it up and run through the gears a few times. So here we go. Start it up. back into park. Back to drive. Reverse. Back into park. There we go. Still pumped a little bit more in. Going to the level on this gallon container, we've put about eight litres in now. So I'll stop it and see what we're looking like. Okay, I think that's sufficient now. So now we're going to start the engine and run it up. While we're waiting for the temperature to rise, 45 degrees. I'm just going to through, run through the gears again. Everything nice and smooth. And then we'll put it back into park. Okay. Okay. So the level has dropped now. So then we're flowing through. So we're going to put some more in. Here we go. 
Four metres in now, so I've just stopped it. I will we'll do pull now. the pipe off and see if it's coming out. Yeah, okay, so we're draining that, so now, back on again for the time being. I've just realised it was set on Fahrenheit, so I've just altered the settings on the iCar soft to metric, and it, now it reads in centigrade, which is what we want. Target temperature is 45 degrees centigrade. Just put a little bit more fluid in now. It's about run out this time, so we must have used a good eight and a half litres. Stunt wants a little bit more, I think. We've put the last dribbles now of ATF in. There's virtually none there. We've turned the tap off. So we've got to stop it draining back. Just gotta wait now for it to get up to uh, 45 degrees. Just having a general look round now, we don't seem to have any leaks or anything. Going to back together very easily. Nothing around the sun for anything. No, it's all nice and clean in there. So the temperature is rising nicely now, it's 40 degrees. So a few more degrees, we shall take the pipe off and we'll check the level. We've got the plug ready with the new washer on. Alright, the temperature now is at 43 degrees. So I'm going to take the cover off now. Forty-three degrees. Forty-four degrees now. Time to unscrew. It's still 44 degrees. And that's it, 45 degrees. Tighten up in a second. Right, so we're done. We turn the car off at about 45 degrees. When it started dribbling, all we have to do now is tighten the sump plug up, torque it up to 22 newton meters, and that's it, job done. Okay then, it's all finished, so now we're going to take it for a quick test drive, shall we get on? Right, here we go. Oh, it's pretty cold, so we just started it up. Break off. Break off. Yes, there we go. That was, that was very smooth for a cold start. Just take it around the road a little bit and see what happens. We've used probably nine litres of oil for this which is a lot more than I thought, I thought it would be about 8, but they do say 9, and I think that's about what we've used 9, and it's the blue uh, 236.15 ATF, it's uh, 7229 uh, gearbox, the 7G Tronic version. So, it's just... I took it for a quick run last night, and everything seemed fine, but it was... Uh, getting late so just round the block really this is more of a proper test drive it can help me up a little bit down here you couldn't even feel it change gear there it's gone from third to fourth to fifth 
and it's just like linear, you couldn't change, you couldn't feel anything at all. It's not even warm yet, it's seven and a half degrees outside, the car just started up, it's not even registered on the temperature gauge yet. Changing down, in fifth, fourth, third, yeah, it's just like coasting. At the moment, it seems absolutely perfect, it's just. Uh, We'll try the manual and we'll try the sport mode in a second when we get going. It's on uh, comfort at the moment. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, down to fourth again, drop to gear there to go around this island, back up to fifth. I mean, the gearbox was okay before. You could feel it sort of stutter a little bit every now and again, but because you've done 44,000 miles and it's it'll be six, six and a half years old, seven years old in July, although it's done no miles. We're about straight to six now, and it's just cruising a little bit. So we're going to try, we'll try put sport in sport now. We'll just hold back a little bit and we'll just. See if it drops the gear. Yeah, third gear straight away. Back to fourth, lovely. Very smooth. Very smooth. This was what they like when they first leave the factory. It's probably done a few gear ch changes in its time. And I tell you, the oil was really, really black. It was. It, 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 um, I didn't think it would be after only uh, 44,000 miles, but it's really dark, the oil was. Really dark. Right, we're going to put it in flappy now, flappy panels in manual mode. We're in third at the moment. It's just trouble is, we've got too many lorries on the road. That's it. Can't get going. My E250 2014 model has a full transmission service. Uh, parts cost me about £155. I only use the genuine Mercedes parts for everything and I'm very pleased with the outcome. So then to finish off we've uh, got about 9 litres left of the old stuff and we've got about half a litre left of the new stuff. So we've put a good 9 litres in, that's because we drained the torque converter. Uh, it sounds um, pretty tricky saying draining torque converters and stuff, but all you had to do was uh, undo a little screw, uh, put an uh, electric drain out, put the screw back in, and when you fill the gearbox, it just fills its torque converter back up again. It's no big deal. Didn't need any special tools about uh, apart from the iCar Soft to measure the temperature of the oil, uh, and we just needed a low-range torque wrench, some hex drives, and some torque sockets. And that's it really, it wasn't as hard as I thought it'd be, a lot easier uh, than it looks. Uh, the hardest part for me, I think, was getting the vehicle level. Again, it uh, jacked up with a, just a basic uh, jack and uh, axle stands. But once you're underneath, everything comes apart like you think it should do. It's quite easy really. So um, there we go, to finish it, it's worthwhile doing.